Unit 12, day two, more graphing linear inequalities. Okay, so we have a bit of review here to take care of. So write the equation in slope-intercept form. Okay, slope-intercept form means y equals mx plus b. So effectively, we want to get y by itself. Okay, so here I'm going to go ahead and box in the y term. In fact, I'm going to do that on both of these, one and two. But now I need to do whatever I need to do to get y by itself. So in this case over here, I have this plus 3x. I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides. Okay, so those two form a zero pair right there. So I get y equals, and these two are like oil and water, so I get negative 3x plus 6. Those two can't go together. So y equals negative 3x plus 6. And number two, on the other hand, since I want y by itself, the y term by itself, I'm going to have to add 3x to both sides, which is going to give me 4y equals 3x plus 8. Now, y is not by itself, so I need to divide by 4. And I have to divide everything by 4 here, so I get y equals... 3 fourths x plus 2. Okay. Now next we want to solve some inequalities. All right, so I want to get, in this case, x by itself. So here I'm going to divide by 2. And so I get x is less than or equal to 4. Now the, the thing we do have to remember though, is that when you multiply or divide by negative, you flip the sign. Okay, so if you multiply or divide by a negative, flip the sign. Okay, that's our only real rule that we have to follow. Otherwise, it's just like solving equations. So in this case, we did not divide or multiply by negative, we divided by a positive 2, so that's why nothing changed there. Okay. Well, the second one, however, we're going to have to divide by negative 4. We're dividing or multiplying by a negative, so we are going to have to flip the sign. So x is greater than negative 3. Okay, and number 5, let's see, we want x by itself again, so we're going to have to... Box that term in, subtract 7 from both sides. So 21, negative 3x. Still want x by itself. We're going to have to divide by negative 3, which will, as our rule says, flip the sign. So we're going to have x is greater than, nope, not greater than, less than or equal to negative 7. Next, write the inequality shown by each graph. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to notice on these graphs is that this one right here is shaded down. That means it's going to be a less than symbol. Okay, and it's a solid line, so it's going to be a less than or equal to. So y is less than or equal to. And let's see, the y-intercept is 2. So it's going to have a plus 2 on the end. Now the slope I have to figure out. Well, from that point to, that actually is a perfect point right there. It's going down one into the right one, which is going to be a slope of negative 1. So negative 1x plus 2. Okay. Now number 7, this is a vertical line actually. Right? So this is actually going to be, it's going to fall under the second part of Hoy Bucks. It's a vertical line, so it's going to be an x equals, so it's going to be x, and let's see, that line is at negative, going through negative 2. Now, because it's going to the right, that actually means that these numbers are bigger than negative 2. They're greater than negative 2, so greater than, and it's dashed, so there's no line right there. And that's all there is. All right, number eight. 
graph and shade the solutions of each. This is most of what we're going to be doing today. All right, so in order to even tell the slope and the line trip to graph it, we have to get y by itself. So subtract, oh, let's see, I want to get y, the plus 3y by itself, so I'm going to subtract 2x on both sides. And so I'll get 3y is less than negative 2x minus 9. And then dividing by 3, I'm going to get y is less than negative 2 thirds x minus 3, because I divide everything by 3 right there. Oh, there's our inequality. Now, the question, one question is, how do I know that I don't flip the sign there? I keep the sign the same. Well, the number in front of the y, number in front of the y, is positive. If that number is negative, we're going to flip it. Okay, so, well, this actually allows us to fill in everything else here. We get negative 2 thirds and minus 3. So to graph that, I'm going to start with that, that point, that minus 3, the y-intercept. Slope's negative 2 thirds. And we to fill those two in. Okay. Now this is going to be a less than, so it's going to be shading below. It's going to be shading below this. And because it's not an equal to, it's going to be a dashed line. Dash line. All right, so is that point 2, negative 2 a solution? That point is right there. Remember, it has to be one of three things. It's either in the shaded area, on a solid line, or makes the inequality true. In this case, we can see it's not in the shaded area, it's not on a solid line, so the answer is no. And that's all we have there. And number 9, again, same idea, we want to get y by itself. So I'm going to box in my y term. Now I won't have, I'm going to have to add 6x here. So 2y is greater than 6x minus 2. Dividing everything by 2. Are we going to flip this one? Remember, that number is positive 2, so it's not going to flip. So it's going to be y is greater than... 3x minus 1. So our slope is 3, y-intercept is minus 1. So to graph that, just like we did yesterday, start at minus 1, slope of 3. Okay. Uh, this one is going to be above, it's greater than, so it's above and it's dashed. And then the point negative 4, 2. Negative 4, 2 is most definitely in the shaded area. So, yes, it is a solution. Okay. All right, continuing on. Number 10. We still need to get y by itself in order to graph it. Graph this inequality. So, I'm going to start by boxing in my y term, which in turn, shows me I need to divide by negative 2. Okay, now because I'm dividing by a negative number, that right there is negative. Okay, my sign is going to flip, so it's going to be actually be a greater than or equal to in, down here. Divide everything by negative 2, so we get negative 2x minus 6. So y is greater than or equal to negative 2x minus 6, which tells the slope's negative 2, y intercept's negative 6. So... Plot that down, negative 2 down 2 over 1, up 2 and over 1. Okay, and then use your straight edge to draw that, make that in a line nice and smooth. Okay, good, that's straight. All right, so greater than or equal to tells us that's going to be above and solid, because that right there. All right, so... So we know, we know we're going to be above that line. So we're going to shade this half of our graph. Now, is 0, negative 3 a solution? So if I take a point, put a point 0, negative 3, 
That is most definitely in the shaded area. So that is a solution. Okay. All right, now before we even get to the get to dividing by anything. I can tell you right now this one right here is going to be flipped because I have a negative in front of my y term. Negative in front of my y tells me this line is going to flip in the end. So in the end I I can guarantee you I'm going to have y is less than. Okay. But let's just go ahead and box that term in first and we'll see if that is true. So we box it and we need to subtract 3x from both sides. Now because these two don't go together, they're oil and water, uh, this is going to be negative 3x plus 18. We still have our greater than sign, negative 9y. Alright, well if I box in a y term, I notice they have a negative 9 right here. So that is going to flip as I said it would. So divide by negative 9, and that actually ends up being a positive one third. So it'll flip positive one third x minus two. So my slope's one third, y intercept's negative two. I'll rewrite that down here in that blank. Okay, so once I go to graph, now to go to graphs, I start at negative two. I'm gonna start my y intercept right there. One third is my slope. So up one over three, up one over three, or down to the left three. All right, is this going to be dashed or solid? Well, I can look at it and tell that there is not an equal sign there. There's a, it's a strictly less than, so it's going to be a dashed line. All right, so a dashed line. It's a less than, so it's going to be below. All right, now zero, negative two, that point right there. Remember, for it to be a solution, it either has to be in the solid, sorry, in the shaded area or on the solid line. So is that in the shaded area? No, it's not. Okay. Is it on a solid line? It's on a dashed line. So the answer is no, it is not a solution. Okay, 12. To get y by itself here, I'm going to box in my y term. Notice it has a negative sign right there. It's actually a negative one. So I'm going to end up flipping the sign before I'm done with it. Okay, but I need to add five to both sides. So I'm going to get negative one y is greater than or equal to four x plus five. Dividing by negative one there, I get y is less than or equal to negative four x minus five. Or equal to negative 4x minus 5 in that blank down there. Tells me my slope is negative 4, y intercept is minus 5. All right, so if I go to graph this, I'm just going to start down here at negative 5. Ah, it's a negative, negative slope, so it's going down and to the right or up and to the left. So up 4, 1, 4, 1. Okay, less than or equal to tells me it's going to be below and that it's also going to be a solid line. Okay, so, let's see, up four, yeah. Okay, and if you use your straight edge, that'll work out real well. Less than, so below. Right, now, for the last part of this point, negative one, negative one. That actually lands right there on our line. So, is it a solid line? It's on a solid line, so that means it is a solution. It is a solution. That's a good thing. In the shaded area or on the solid line. All right. Number 13. Last one on this page. We want y by itself. Okay. We're getting lots of practice doing that. So we need to add 6x. Now, these two cannot go together. We should know that by now. These two cannot go together. But I'm going to go ahead and write them side by side. 6x plus 0 even though plus zero doesn't mean much. Okay, that's a zero pair, so I'll bring down the negative three y. What does this sign, this number right here tell me? It's a negative three, what does that tell me? It says my sign's gonna flip, right? So this is gonna, when I divide by negative three, 
it's going to reflect. It's going to be greater than or equal to. All right, so 6 divided by negative 3 is negative 2. 0 divided by th negative 3 is 0. So my y-intercept is 0. Slope's negative 2, and I'll just go ahead and write that down here. y is greater than or equal to negative 2x. I actually don't have to put the plus 0 there. Okay, But that's good for when I graph, because I'm going to start right here. Down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1. Up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1. All right, dash your solid. I could actually tell you that from the beginning. It's going to be solid, because that line's underneath that sign. an awful lot if I've ever seen one. Okay. Solid, and it's greater than or equal to, so it's going to be above. All right, so that point 1, 4, most definitely in the shaded area. So that one is a solution. All right, next we have a couple of word problems to work out, and then that'll be the end. All right, so Clark is having a party at his house. His father has allowed him to spend at most $20 on snacks, on snack food. He would like to buy chips that cost $4 per bag and pretzels that cost $2 per bag. Okay, so a couple things I need to make sure we make note of here. At spend at most $20. That means we cannot spend more than $20, right? Okay, so that means this is actually going to be a less than or equal to. That tells us something right there. Most means we're going to be let below that. Okay, and then next we know we're talking about chips that are $4 a bag and pretzels that are $2 a bag. So the variables are the things we don't know. We don't know how many bags of chips and how many bags of pretzels. We don't know how much they cost. We don't know how many of each. So we're actually going to write this x equals, we just always use x and y, we don't, we could use p and p and c, but I'm just going to stick with x and y for now. So x equals chips, that's the number of bags of chips, and y equals pretzels. And again, that's bags of pretzels, bags of chips. All right, so when I try to write an inequality for this, I have chips, I have pretzels. I know it's going to have to be less than or equal to 20. Okay, now the thing, here's where this information is going to come in handy. Okay, we know that four chips cost $4 a bag. So $4 a bag for each bag of chips. Okay, and then $2 per bag for the pretzels. Well, why is the pretzels? So we have this right here. So the equation we get is 4x plus 2y is less than or equal to 20. This is all the cost right here. Okay, so this is the chips. This is the pretzels. This is the total cost. So the cost is less than or equal to 20 is what this is really saying. Okay, So I'm going to use this to graph this. Okay, And the way I'm going to do that is because I know how much chips cost. right? So they're $4 a bag. Well, for 20, if you have $20, if you only bought chips, if you only bought chips, you could get five bags, right? 20 divided by four. Okay, so I could say 20 divided by four and get five bags of chips. So I probably need to label this though. Let's put this right here. Let's say chips go down here and pretzels up here. So if you were only buying chips, you could buy five bags of chips. That would work. Just plain old. Okay, same thing, if I got just pretzels, if I ignored the chips totally, I could get, well, 10 bags, because they're $2 a piece. Okay, so I could get 10 bags of pretzels. All right. Now, this is a less than or equal to. So almost all of our word problems are going to be a solid line like this. Okay. Okay. And it's less than or equal to, so we're actually going to be below. All right. So, I graph the solutions, okay? Give two possible combinations. Two 
possible combinations. There are lots of options here, two possible ones. So let's just pick a couple. How about two, three? That would mean two bags of chips and three bags of pretzels. Okay, there's one possible combination. Okay, well, let's see. How about we pick another one? Let's see. How about one, six? One, six. So that would mean one bag of chips and six bags of pretzels. Okay. And that last question, what's the maximum number of pretzels, number of bags of pretzels he could order? Well, according to our graph, the maximum, you couldn't get any more than 10 with that money, right? So 10 bags. 10 bags of pretzels. Okay. All right. All right, 15, we get another one kind of like this. Okay, so at a high school football game, tickets at the gate cost $7 per adult and $4 per student. Write a linear inequality to determine the number of adult and student tickets that need to be sold so the amount of money taken in at the gate is at least $280. So again, I want to underline some things here. We have $7 per student, or for, per adult, $4 per student, and then we know that the, cost, the amount, amount of money needs to be at least $280. Well, if you say you have to be at least six feet tall, that means six feet taller. Over. Okay, so um, this is going to have to. This is actually going to be greater than or equal to 280. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and write that down here. Greater than or equal to 280. Okay. Now my two variables. This is really important. I need to know what these are. Well, the things we're talking about here are adults and students. So I'm going to go ahead and say x is adult tickets because we're talking about tickets here. And y is student student tickets. Okay, let's leave me in the corner there. Okay, so again, x we're gonna have an x and a y down here. Well, seven dollars per adult, so seven x. Four dollars per student, so plus four y. And so there I am. There we go. There's my inequality. Okay. So I can use this like I did the last time. I could divide by 7, and I say that the x needs to be 40. 280 divided by 7? 40. So the x needs to be 40. Well, that's adult tickets. It's adult tickets. And student so 40 adult tickets, or you could potentially get actually 70. 280 divided by 4, so 70 student tickets. And really any combination in between. So let's see if I can do this. All right, that works. Okay. With your strategy, you can probably do better. Now, greater than or equal to, though, that's more than 280. So that actually means we're going to be shading area out here. Okay, so if we picked a couple of values that they could do, they could buy, or they could sell, let's say 32 and 56. So they could sell 32 adult and 56, I said, 56 student tickets, right? Okay, they could also, now this isn't on the graph, but I could say something like, oh, 50 adult and, 50 adult and 50 student. Right, I could say 50 adult and 50 student. Because really there's not a maximum here. It's not really a maximum that you've got to get to over here. Anything, anything that's out in the shaded area, which it keeps going and going. What's the minimum number of adults that need to attend the game in order to reach the goal? 
Well, according to our graph, it's actually 40. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to assume that this means that there are um, no students or that there are just adults. So if there are just adults or no students, then that's going to be 40 adults. If they do just 40 adults, they could, they could reach that goal. Okay. Now, our last question here. A baker is making chocolate and lemon pound cakes. He can make at most 12 cakes at one time, which inequality describes the situation. Okay, now this actually comes down to one word most, at, at, or that phrase, at most. That means you need to be less than or equal to. We cannot be more than 12. Well, that would be C. All right, let's get going.